Welcome to an exploration of one of nature's most fascinating quantum phenomena, surface plasmon resonance in metallic nanoparticles. Surface plasmons are collective oscillations of conduction electrons in metallic nanoparticles that create brilliant optical effects. This is why gold nanoparticles can appear red or purple instead of their familiar golden color. First, let's understand what makes nanoparticles fundamentally different from bulk metals. Nanoparticles are incredibly tiny, ranging from 1 to 100 nanometers. To put this in perspective, they're about 1,000 times smaller than the diameter of a human hair. Here we see the size difference, bulk gold on one side and a tiny gold nanoparticle on the other. The nanoparticle is so small that quantum effects become dominant. The key condition is that the particle diameter is much smaller than the wavelength of light, typically around 400 to 700 nanometers for visible light. But why does size dramatically change optical properties? The answer lies in how electrons behave when confined to nanoscale dimensions. When electrons are confined in such small volumes, they can oscillate together as a collective unit, creating what we call surface plasmons. Now let's dive into the physics behind surface plasmon resonance. When light hits a metallic nanoparticle, the oscillating electric field of the light wave causes the free electrons inside to oscillate collectively. This is the essence of a surface plasmon. The plasma frequency, omega plasma, equals the square root of NE squared divided by epsilon naught times electron mass. This fundamental equation describes the natural oscillation frequency of the electron gas. Let's break down what each symbol in this equation represents. N is the electron density, which is about 10 to the 29 electrons per cubic meter for gold. E is the elementary charge, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Me is the electron mass 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms and epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter. Let's calculate the actual plasma frequency for gold nanoparticles. For gold, the electron density is approximately 5.9 times 10 to the 28 electrons per cubic meter. Plugging in all our values, we get omega plasma equals the square root of this expression. This gives us approximately 1.37 times 10 to the 16 radians per second. But what wavelength of light does this frequency correspond to? Let's convert it. Using lambda equals 2 pi c over omega plasma, we get approximately 138 nanometers. This is in the ultraviolet range, which is why bulk gold appears gold and yellow. Now comes the crucial question. Why do nanoparticles behave differently from bulk metals? In nanoparticles, the electrons can't just oscillate freely. They're confined to a small sphere, which creates a restoring force. The electron cloud can shift relative to the positive ionic cores, creating a dipole moment. The surface plasmon resonance frequency omega SPR equals omega plasma divided by the square root of 1 plus 2 epsilon m, where epsilon m is the dielectric constant of the surrounding medium. For gold nanoparticles suspended in water, where the dielectric constant is approximately 1.77, let's calculate the resonance frequency. We get omega SPR equals approximately 6.3 times 10 to the 15 radians per second. This corresponds to a wavelength of about 520 nanometers, which is in the green part of the visible spectrum. This is why gold nanoparticles can appear red or purple. They strongly absorb green light. The complete mathematical description comes from Mi theory, developed by Gustav Mi in 1908. The extinction cross-section Cx is given by this expression involving the particle radius r, the wavelength lambda, and the real and imaginary parts of the dielectric function epsilon r and epsilon i. What does this complex equation actually tell us about nanoparticle behavior? My A theory allows us to predict exactly how much light will be absorbed or scattered by nanoparticles of any size, which is crucial for applications. Here's a typical absorption spectrum for gold nanoparticles, showing a strong peak around 520 nanometers. This is the signature of surface plasmon resonance. One of the most important aspects is how the resonance changes with particle size. As particle size increases from 10 to 50 nanometers, the color shifts dramatically. Smaller particles appear more reddish, larger ones more purple. 
This is due to the changing balance between absorption and scattering. For small particles, where radius is much less than wavelength, absorption dominates over scattering. For larger particles, where radius approaches wavelength divided by 10, scattering becomes increasingly important, and the peak shifts to longer wavelengths. Let's look at a beautiful historical example of plasmonic nanoparticles in action. Medieval stained glass windows contain gold nanoparticles that create their brilliant red color. The glassmakers didn't understand the quantum physics, but they empirically discovered how to create these nanoparticles. The deep red color comes from gold nanoparticles typically 20 to 30 nanometers in diameter, which absorb green light and transmit red and blue. Remarkably, this technology dates back over 2,000 years, but the underlying physics of surface plasmon resonance was only understood in the 20th century. Surface plasmon resonance doesn't just depend on size. Shape plays a crucial role, too. Different nanoparticle shapes support different plasmon modes. Spheres have one resonance, nanorods have two, longitudinal and transverse, and nanotriangles have even more complex resonances. Nanorods are particularly interesting because they show two distinct resonance peaks. The longitudinal resonance wavelength approximately equals the sphere wavelength times 1 plus 0 0.8 times the aspect ratio. This means we can tune the color by changing the rod's length to width ratio. Surface plasmon resonance has revolutionized multiple fields of science and technology. In biosensing, plasmon resonance can detect even single molecules binding to nanoparticle surfaces, enabling ultra-sensitive medical diagnostics. In cancer therapy, gold nanoparticles can be targeted to tumor cells and heated with laser light, destroying cancer cells while leaving healthy tissue intact. When laser light hits the plasmonic nanoparticle at its resonance frequency, the absorbed energy converts to heat, which can destroy nearby cancer cells. In solar cells, plasmonic nanoparticles can trap light and enhance absorption, improving efficiency. One of the most remarkable aspects of surface plasmons is the enormous field enhancement they create. The enhanced electric field, E enhanced, equals the incident field E naught times an enhancement factor F of omega. At resonance, this enhancement factor can reach values from 100 to 10,000, meaning the field near the nanoparticle surface is up to 10,000 times stronger than the incident field. Why is such enormous field enhancement important for applications? Surface-enhanced Raman spectroscopy exploits this enhancement to detect and identify single molecules, which is impossible with conventional methods. Since Raman intensity is proportional to field to the fourth power, the overall enhancement can reach 10 to the 8 or even 10 to the 12, making single molecule detection possible. No resonance is infinitely sharp. Let's understand what limits the plasmon resonance. The total damping rate gamma has three components bulk damping from electron scattering, surface damping from boundary effects, and radiation damping from light emission. For gold nanoparticles at room temperature, let's estimate these contributions. Bulk damping is approximately 1.2 times 10 to the 14 inverse seconds. Surface damping equals Fermi velocity divided by radius, which for a 10 nanometer particle gives about 10 to the 14 inverse seconds. This explains why smaller particles have broader resonance peaks surface scattering becomes more important as the surface to volume ratio increases. Temperature also affects plasmonic properties in interesting ways. As temperature increases, electrons scatter more frequently with the lattice, increasing damping and broadening the resonance peak. The damping rate increases approximately linearly with temperature as gamma of T equals gamma naught plus alpha T. When nanoparticles get close together, something fascinating happens. Their plasmons couple. When two nanoparticles are brought close together, their electric fields overlap and couple, creating new hybrid plasmon modes. The wavelength shift delta lambda is proportional to exponential of negative d over r, where d is the separation and r is the particle radius. This shows the coupling decays exponentially with distance. At very small gaps of just a few nanometers, the field enhancement in the gap can exceed 1,000 times, creating hot spots for spectroscopy. For larger particles, the simple dipole approximation breaks down. When the particle radius exceeds wavelength divided by 20, retardation effects become important and higher order multipole modes appear. For larger particles, we see higher order modes like quadrupole resonances, where the charge distribution has more complex patterns. 
These higher order modes appear at different wavelengths, creating multiple peaks in the spectrum and richer optical behavior. How do we actually make these nanoparticles with precise control? The Turkevich method uses chemical reduction in solution to create spherical nanoparticles with good size control. Gold chloride is reduced by citrate to form gold nanoparticles, with citrate acting as both reducing agent and stabilizer. Seed-mediated growth starts with small seed particles and grows them to desired sizes and shapes, enabling precise control over nanorods and other geometries. Size control is achieved by carefully varying the concentration of reducing agent, temperature, and reaction time. Let's summarize what makes surface plasmon resonance so remarkable. Metallic nanoparticles can find free electrons to nanoscale volumes, enabling collective oscillations that bulk metals cannot support in the same way. The resonance frequency can be precisely tuned by controlling particle size, shape, and the dielectric constant of the surrounding medium. At resonance, local electric field enhancement can reach extraordinary factors of 100 to 10,000, enabling ultra-sensitive detection. Surface plasmon resonance is a complex function of particle size, shape, environment, and interparticle coupling, giving us many parameters to optimize for specific applications. The applications of plasmonic nanoparticles span medicine for targeted therapy, ultra-sensitive biosensing, enhanced solar energy conversion, and fundamental studies of light-matter interaction. Surface plasmon resonance represents a beautiful marriage of quantum mechanics, electromagnetism, and nanotechnology, opening doors to innovations we're only beginning to explore.